Buy old Windows version now and still get the upgrade for free. We have a little office for our local sports club here. In this office we have three pieces which are all running on Ubuntu. Because all of the PC users in this office are not that well educated in using Linux, I want to upgrade all three pieces to Windows 10. Can I get three cheap Windows XP copies and just upgrade them for free? I know, until 29th July, or is the upgrade restricted for copies that are sold before a special date? Which alternatives I've got to get Windows for these three PCs? Our club isn't that big and we have to save money where we can. Smile. The free upgrade for Windows 10 is only available for Windows 7, 8 or 8.1. But if you act quick, you can buy a license for Windows 7, 8 or 8.1 and. The best idea though, is to use Media Creation Tool to download and burn an ISO of Windows 10, and use your Windows 7 license keys to do a fresh install of Win 10. You can use any of Win 7, 8, 8.1 or 10 license keys. However, you can't use XP keys for that. Edit, in the comments, at CyberMonkey suggested that the Media Creation Tool is the only solution to get the upgrade, because the old version of Windows has to be installed for at least 30 days before the deadline. However, this does not apply to clean installs you can still use UWIN 7-8-8.1 license key to install and activate Win 10. Mary Mary quite contrary. You state we have to save money where we can, and we have a little office for our local sports club. Well remain with Linux. Column. This is probably an answer that you would not like to read. In your specific case migrating to Windows it is not the right solution. It is not a religious choice it is a specific one. In brief, the decision to migrate from an OS to another with a limited budget will have consequences in the present and the future. I discourage such decision without an accurate cost and benefits analysis related to the needs of your working place. The decision to migrate to meet the needs or the preferences of a user, even if volunteer and 80 years old, have to be thoughtful. The situation in details. The place is a little office with 3 PC of a local sports club. There are 3 PC with Ubuntu and GT, the work made till now is made under Ubuntu. The goal is we have to save money where we can. The PC users are not well educated with Linux, especially one, 80 years old. The needs of a working place like the one you described usually are, an office suite, word processor, maybe a spreadsheet, Maybe maybe a slideshow presentation program, an email client, a browser, eventually some programs to deal with images and videos. An extended need can be to develop, manage and keep online, of an internet site, I said WordPress because I sense you have one. Some consequences with the migration. You will pay for licenses, with a discount now and you will probably have to pay for MS Office for full and so on. If you plan to use an alternative office suite, LibreOffice, StarOffice, OpenOffice, then you will have no advantage for this migrating to a new OS. You may have to migrate all the old documents to the new OS. Usually you may experience some problem with page formats, pictures that change page. If you have macros in Uno they should be a problem in MS Office. Even if the migration will be with few problems, you have to spend some time, equivalent of money, to check and to fix it. You will train people to work under Windows. That means that in future when you will need to buy a new computer you will need to pay again for the new Windows license to keep the same OS, maybe even without discounts. Slow downs. You have to keep running an antivirus, and maybe an anti-malware. This will use a good part of one core of your CPU, 
and will access often to disk. Even if many optimizations were done with Windows 10, there remain the general slow down experience with old hardware and a new loss. Legal changes slash consequences. Changing the OS is more than a simple upgrade of a program. In general, you will change the condition to use your machine, in particular, you pass from the Ubuntu terms, UB, to the Windows 1's W10. Even if yours is a local sport club, it is always a company and not a private user. Looking inside the MS software terms, you can spot some limitations, specifically, for example, 0.2.cv. 2.dv and some wide concessions about the privacy of your working place, point three, that you have to communicate to your bosses and evaluate in order to know if it is acceptable for the company. Two dot C. B. Use the software as server software for commercial hosting, install the software on a server and allow users to access it remotely. Two dot D. B. Remote access, no more than once every 90 days, you may designate a single user who physically uses the licensed device as the licensed user. The licensed user may access the licensed device from another device using remote access technologies. Other users, at different times, may access the licensed device from another device using remote access technologies, but only on devices separately licensed to run the same or higher edition of this software. 3. By accepting this agreement and using the software you agree that Microsoft may collect, use, and disclose the information as described in the Microsoft Privacy Statement aka .ms slash privacy, ed, click learn more below personal data we collect to see, and as may be described in the user interface associated with the software features. 4. An Alternative Solution if you go ahead with the Kaday version of Ubuntu, Kubuntu, you will have keyboard shortcuts similar to the Windows ones, Control C, Control V, Control X, and the PC users will feel less discomfort. Moreover, you can highly custom the behavior of the shortcuts and of the mouse to embrace the user's habits. Note that you will see more benefits on medium and long time. Comments before you change the whole office it, it is critical to understand which are the real office needs. And if you discover that they are only Word plus Excel plus PowerPoint plus Mail and browsers. Well the open source world is more more than enough. As stated even by persons that disagree with the content of this answer, thousands of companies that require cross-platform document management use open source office suites on Windows and I can add, suites developed and more often patched under Linux. So the point is, if your goal is to save money where we can, why to pay for an OS, now and after, that you do not need in a situation of limited budget. In your budget situation I may start to think to Windows only to meet the need of a specific hardware or of a software that has no equivalent alternatives under Linux. Volunteer on salary can be useful today and disappear tomorrow. The organization of an office it is supposed to endure and to be independent from the employee's preferences. If you nonetheless decided to go ahead with Windows, you may check what each version gives you one. Then it can be useful in your analysis remember that. From Windows 7 Starter, Windows 7 Home Basic, Windows 7 Home Premium you will be upgraded to Windows 10 Home. 2. From Windows 7 Professional and Ultimate you will be upgraded to Windows 10 Pro. At least good if you will start from Windows 7 Professional. 2. When you will change your hardware you may need to do a reactivation. Probably it is not the case for a new HDD or a video card, 6, but with a motherboard you will need to do a new activation. A motherboard upgrade, even if you reuse storage, video, memory, and a case, is considered a new PC. In that case, if the underlying Windows license is from a retail copy, that license can be transferred. If you are upgrading, 
and not replacing, a motherboard on an OEM PC that was sold with Windows pre-installed, the license agreement prevents the license from being transferred. 6. Someone said you may have to buy a new license to, 7. In case of motherboard changes, you might have to buy a new license. For the installation remember that, 4, 5, 6. Probably you will find more convenient to do a Windows 10 clean install using the media creation tool, 4, because the upgrading can be based on the recovery option that is normally available 30 days after. That you have to be sure that your free copy of Windows 10 is activated. 5. That you probably will prefer to avoid the online upgrade, 6. Thanks for the attention paid. You can't upgrade Windows XP or Vista to Windows 10 for free. You'd need to buy Windows 7, install all of the service packs then upgrade to Windows 10. The difference in price between Windows 7 and Windows 10 seems minimal so probably isn't worth the effort. Can I get three cheap Windows XP copies and just upgrade them for free? As already noted elsewhere, no. Windows XP doesn't qualify for the upgrade. Or is the upgrade restricted for copies that are sold before a special date? This isn't true at all. The famous free upgrade is restricted for copies of the Windows 10 upgrade that are installed before a special date. You can't just own a Windows 7 license. You need to go through the installation process, which involves activating Windows 10 before the date. Once you do that, if you want to downgrade back to Windows 7, you can do so and you're still licensed to upgrade back to Windows 10 later, if you like. However, Getting the Windows 10 license requires more than just purchasing the Win 7 license. In exchange for the free upgrade, Microsoft requires that people go through the effort of getting the PC off of the old version of Microsoft Windows before the deadline. They are really wanting people to get Windows 10 installed and actually experience Windows 10. Which alternatives I've got to get Windows for these three PCs? Consider getting Windows pre-installed on brand new pieces. I decided to just use one vendor, New Egg, to show some quick examples. New Egg, Windows 10 Home Edition is $119.99, actually $10 cheaper than that when you place item in cart. New Egg, Windows 7, 64-bit, 32-bit is also same price, is $139.99. New Egg, Quantum Access Windows 10 Mini PC Stick, Intel Betrail T, Quad Core, Z3735 F1.33 GHz, 2 GB RAM plus 32 GB is a computer with Windows 10, and is $89.99. Granted, I chose a computer with some rather crummy specs, but if the computers that you're currently using are old, then some of the cheaper computers being sold may be an upgrade especially if you're willing to get refurbished. Also check out Microsoft Bespark for Microsoft software, if you qualify for that. As a side note, also check out TechSoup.org for any other software needs, if you are a non-profit, and qualify for that. Note, none of the above details are meant as recommendations to proceed with. I'm just trying to throw out some ideas to open your eyes to some options and letting you know of some requirements I have been made aware of. Personally, I like Hasta's answer, checking out various versions of Linux, including Kubuntu, may be better. 
since there are concerns about people not being tech-savvy enough for Linux, they may often just need a graphical interface with a web browser, that was the main basis of a lot of Google's marketing for Chromebooks. However, you did ask for alternatives, to get Windows, which I interpreted as options that did involve getting Windows, not alternatives to doing that. My choice of new egg was just that I felt confident that I could find prices quickly so I could make this answer quickly, not because I'm trying to encourage usage of them over any other vendor. Also, if you're looking to save money, consider the invisible hand and price blink browser plugins, which I have liked, and do recommend. Okay, I am making a recommendation here, and maybe the price trace toolbar, which I learned about later. If you like this audio channel, please consider subscribing.